go ahead and talk about our gaming lecture. Now, we're going to briefly discuss gaming as this helps us learn more about some of us work on the gaming portion of our digital citizenship. Now this is not going to be a deep dive because this this could easily be its own unit, but we're just going to brush on it, touch on some, some touch on some ideas that will help open you up and uh, inspire you as you create your game. Now you can see we have four different types of games right here. Okay, so let's get into it. So the types of games we have the first one, second one, third one, fourth one. So we have board games, we have computer games, we have arcade games, and we have con console games. So they're all a little different, but they're all a little the same. Okay, doesn't matter what which medium that you choose. Um, they still require a person playing them, and as we go through this, you'll start to see maybe some commonalities, things that you could tie together. So, here's a question for you. Why were games invented? Was it on purpose? Was it on accident? Think about that. Why were games invented? Why do we play games? Maybe you'll be able to put an answer together by the end of this. Well, before we do that, let's do a quick trivia. All right, so I'm going to put a timer on for one minute. It says, what was the first board game? All right, you have about 50 seconds. Again, what was the first board game? Think about it. It's not asking what was your first board game. What was the first board game invented? Who invented it and what was it? All right. You have about 30 seconds. I can remember my first board game. What was the first board game? You have 15 seconds. And the answers will be at the end of this. All right. 10 seconds. What was the first board game? All right, we'll come back to it. So these are the components of games. You have gamification, game mechanics, you have game-based learning, you have game principles, gameplay, play, game design, and gratification theory. Now this is all based on research and I've been looking through articles and I've condensed this into one spot for you to look at. Again, this lecture is introducing you to them. I may not talk about all of them, but at least it's in the back of your head. Some of you have already looked these up in the beginning of our research of this digital citizenship. Some of you guys already looked these up and you already kind of know what these are. If you go and pull up your notes, you don't know what these are and you didn't do that part of the research because you, you're, you did not select games, it's okay. You will learn part of this as we work on it. So, let's see. Oh, it's a question. Does every game have all of these? I don't know. I mean, I, I obviously know, but do you know? Are all of these inside of every game that you play? Think about every game you play. If it's a board game, if it's a computer game, if it's a mobile phone game, I forgot to put that in the beginning, is that that's a new thing. You have your consoles, but you also have mobile phones. Okay. Oh, very good one. When we are on games, we're playing. What does playing mean we're learning? And if we're learning, are we playing? Think about that. Okay. 
we're on games we're playing. We usually play games, but if we're playing, are we learning? And if we're learning, are we playing? It's a tricky, tricky question. Trivia. What was the first computer game? Again, you have timer running. What was the first computer game? I remember my first computer game. You had to stick inside the computer. You had to play. It was very large. So, you have 40 seconds. What was the first computer game? And kind of separate it. There were some computers that were consoles there that seemed like they were consoles. So really try to figure out, is it a console or is it a computer? You have 20 seconds. What was the first computer game? 10 seconds. And the answers will be at the very end, as a reminder. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and explain the play experience. This is one of the bubbles you can see right there. Boom. We have A, B, C, D. Lots of things that are going on here. So inside of play, the four things are A. We have the individual, we have the character, we have the player. That's necessary. And then we go to E. Information, collecting, organizing, analyzing, thinking. That's all that's happening right here. There's so much that's happening with B. You're trying to take in all that information. And we're taking it in through different ways. We're taking it in through our eyes. We're taking it in through our ears. Uh, when we take it in through our eyes, it's what we see. Um, text and pictures. And video, sometimes video, but usually the first two. And then we're taking in information through our ears. What do we hear? And again, this goes back to all the consoles. It goes back to the, what is it, the board game, the computer, the arcade games, and the consoles as well as mobile. And then we come down here to C. Well, C. Now we have to do something with all that information. We have to make choices. It's either A or it's either B or it's this way or that way. It's left or it's right or if it's up, it's down. It's, we have to make a choice and I think that's why we like games. Because in life, we always have these things that we have to do. We have to get up in the morning. We have to go somewhere. We have to eat. We have to drink water. We have to do all these things. Those are necessary. In games, we get to make those choices. There's sometimes we have to do necessary choices as well, but we have a say in these. Okay, so you have your A, you have your B, your C, and everyone enjoys making their own choices because no one's telling you what to do. But here's what happens D. Once we make that choice, we get to see the outcome, the effects the results of that choice. If we pick a ball up and we pull it back and it hits the other balls, we see it reacting to all the other things. The reaction. The cause or the effect. The cause and the effect right there. Okay. So we are seeing what happens because of those choices we made. And then guess what? It goes back to the beginning. The play experience relies on this. What's also happening in here is emotions. We are starting to feel stuff. When we collect things, we're like, oh, when, you know, sometimes we let our emotions go, we get happy because we find things that maybe we didn't find. And then we make decisions because we're like, yeah, I'm going to make this decision. Ah, dang it! Didn't work. Or yes, yes it worked. No, it didn't. And so you make that kind of drives into this as well as emotions. All right, so you have A, B, C, D. You have the player, character, 
you have information, organizing, collecting, analyzing, thinking, making choices, watching and looking at the results and feeling those results and then coming back. There's so much inside of playing games. So again, we think about that question. Is playing learning? So, inside a game, there are two things for game design. Especially for game design information. We have useful things and we have things that just look pretty. All right? But they're both helpful. So, we have useful things. They, they're things that help us complete the job. Now, here's an example that I did right here that we have is Monopoly. Inside of Monopoly, there are rules that are useful to us. You must pick up the dice and roll them, and then that's how many blocks that you move over. Okay? Boop, 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 boop. I got six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Very nice. Yes. And then I just keep going, I keep going. And then the other rule is by the time I come all the way around, I collect $200. That's useful because then I can now buy property. Okay. They help us complete the job, help us, you know, get closer to achieving tasks. Then we also have looks. Looks are cool. They're not always necessary, but it actually immerses us. It allows us to jump further into the game and be part of it. This captures and keeps our attention. They express um, the individual, the character's feelings, and they feel part of the world. And we can tell that through, like I said earlier, visuals, what we see. We can see, oh man, we're not even on planet Earth, or we're in a magical place like Earth, and it, this is this style of it, this is this style of it, okay. it allows us to be more in that environment, we feel part of that world, we keep our attention, this also allows us to express our feelings, if you're in Fortnite and you're playing, you can dance, and you can Use those emoticons, those, your player's face can change, their body can move around and, and like I said, dance, or you can even do it with other individuals where you're playing music together. All right? So looks are cool. They help just dive deeper in there. But also, you can see, like, if you're in danger or you're, or you're in trouble, maybe your screen turns red and, and that that's happening right there. All right. Trivia time again. So timer set. What was the first arcade game? What was the first arcade game? Arcade games were awesome. You used to go to these um, places. They were great. They were a big thing. I want to say the 80s. They were in the mall. They had competitions. People would go. People would play these games. And it was just a social thing to do out in public. There's about 20 seconds left. What was the first arcade game? Think about the controller. What was the first controller for the arcade game? We got 10 seconds. What was the first arcade game? Again, the answer is at the end. Now let's talk about there are three elements of game design. We have context. We have playability. And then we have gameplay. You can tell that these were kind of in the very beginning. In almost every game, 
you know, context play ability in games. I don't know. Is it in every game that you played you've seen all these? We'll start to find out.